This is NDTV and you're watching NDTV 24-7. Our efforts continue to discover the essence of culinary inspiration and as we move between table, kitchen and street, we've obviously chosen well. Indian accents chef Manish Mehrotra is taking us around. Now to another stop, his neighborhood Halwai, the kind that offers a little bit of everything. We will believe we get to the Mithai in just a bit, but Manish is starting with the ingredient behind one of his most lauded inventions. Khandvi. So again the Khandvi, we get Khandvi everywhere. So I, it was just like one day we were eating Khandvi, uh, doing it and some something like that. And it came out like this. So it becomes like a pasta sheet. Yeah. So I said why can't we use it as a, as a, as a pasta sheet? Uh, instead of pasta sheet, use Khandvi sheet. And this is very, very Indian. Yes, good old Khandvi, though the way he uses it, old may not be the word. There it is being rolled out like pasta and cut like it too. This then is what takes it to Khandvi ravioli. I was trying out different things, there was fettuccine. At the moment you start tossing it in a wok, it used to become halwa. So then we cannot like do it with a ravioli. You should know that the stuffing is goat cheese and pumpkin which ensures that as a whole too it is in complete tune with the audience that Khandvi caters to. It will give slightly sweet and sour kind of a flavor which actually the Khandvi flavor is and Gujarati food where you have a little bit of sweet yeah. touch to their food so that is why it yeah. come up all together with the nuttiness of this thing and then when while garnishing we put some khakra on top huh. which gives the extra crunch yeah. a different texture to yeah. this um, dish so it, it is absolutely it came out like perfect here. and once again proof perhaps that it pays to make your own backyard your personal playground A philosophy which is exemplified in this next dish, one which plays with perhaps two of the most unglamorous staples of Indian kitchens, pulkas and kathal. In a fine dining restaurant, who would think of putting kathal on the menu? <laughs> Like, kathal, that's what I'm saying. This type of restaurant getting a kathal is it's, it's a bold thing. But uh, people are loving it. People are loving it. Kathal was the only vegetable which was considered as a non-vegetarian vegetable. Like uh, people used to tell it home like kathal hai meat ke masale mein banana. So something like that. So what does he do? He turns it into the vegetarian equivalent of his food pork pulka tacos. Pretty terrific tacos too. This then is another example of the humor he brings to his hybrids. And as with the savouries, so with the sweets. Yes, we're moving on to Mithai, where once again Manish makes it clear that it's the old basic even classics that remain his favorite thing. Yeah. A guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. And like, these are such a thing which it's very difficult to convert into a dessert, which yeah. is uh, which we can serve it at Indian accent with a twist. Yes, these are all the hardcore karigar yeah. wala kaam. Yeah. Milk cake, good over free, besan laddu. Huh. That you can come up with yeah. something. When I was tasting besan laddu, when you can bind it like this, yeah. why can't you make it in a tart form? Yeah. And do something with that. So then the idea of besan laddu tart with Thai cheesecake cake. Yes, there it is, a besan laddu crust topped with cheesecake, then that in turn is topped with a milk cake based malai. The sandy texture of besan ka laddu and the creaminess of the cheesecake, the contrast is uh, and something was missing. So what to do? So milk uh -huh. cake came into picture. We churn the milk cake with the milk and then make a sauce. Oh my god, is that even legal? And, and, and the besan ka laddu has got everybody has some kind of a memory of besan ka laddu. Nostalgic and delicious, that's the proverbial two birds. But even then, my favorite dessert here traces back to the most ubiquitous bites of barfi, the doda barfi. 
the doda barfi is possibly the most unglamorous right it is the most unglamorous unsung of all the barfi <laughs> But it's one of the most tastiest one. The sure. moment you heat it in a microwave and just, oh, <laughs> it's too good. And so, what did he do? He turned it into a treacle tart, a sticky, sweet, sublimely delicious treacle tart. This is very similar. Both are caramelly in yeah. taste. Uh, both like. Reduce like a toffee yeah. sauce kind of a so, texture, uh, and the gooeyness of uh, both have got the same kind of a gooeyness. Somebody get the man a cake. And no, we're not done yet. There's one more thing we need to try. If there was ever inspiration for witty whimsical takes, a children's store would provide it. Though even then, who knew a gander by one would lead to this, or even better, to this. Yes, candy floss, or as they call it here, with staggering political correctness, budi ke bal. But it's not any candy floss; they add flavor to it too. Orange pan, and on the day I was there, lemon masala. So yes, the brilliance here is childhood flavors fused with more childhood flavors. Own concoction. We have our own ingredients which we put in every every uh, different. Uh, Kacha aam will have amchur also into it. Then uh, lemon masala will have uh, some yeah. chat masala into it. Then orange will have something. So all these are our own concoction with our own recipe, yeah. which uh, we do. And it's delicious. My portion, needless to say, lasted about five seconds before I demolished it. Been a good day. If nostalgia is the name of the game, they've got it. Playing with the familiar, having fun with those old but not forgotten flavors we grew up on. If, as Anthony Bourdain said, context and memory play powerful roles in the truly great meals of one's life, then it's not surprising at all that India, indeed the world, are embracing this particular accent. Kitchens across the country that Edison's division of genius seems to have the strongest case. You know, it being 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. And still, we would have to argue that Indian accent chef Manish Mehrotra brings just a little more than that to his table. Its focus on modern Indian food has garnered it a place on practically every fine dining list, including a place in Glam Media's Best 100 across the world. That the accolades and awards have come thick and fast is a surprise to no one who has eaten here. Riffs like blue cheese stuffed baby naans, galotti kebabs enhanced with foie gras, and desserts that look to Dota Barfi as their base have served it well. But perhaps the most important aspect is that these clever combinations, the smart little spins, find their inspiration in unexpected places. And so today, Manish is taking us to those that he enjoys, but more to the ones that have triggered his wildest flights of fancy. Which is probably why I shouldn't have been surprised that this is where we started, at his local fruitwala. Yeah. What are we shopping for? This is near my house yeah. in Delhi, and this is where I do all my food shopping and everything. Yeah. So, and a lot of ideas, inspirations, yeah. like to make a sorbet with this yeah. or make a sorbet with that. Yeah. So, that, that yeah. 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 so, guys, chef is being kind enough to let us in on how, in a sense, something as basic as this gets to transform into well, this. Sorbets are now somewhat standard. What makes this stand out is he doesn't stop there. He remembers and adds the masala it used to be served with. Because nostalgia, the old tastes of childhood are precisely what he trades in. We were kids, we used to have a lot of uh, guava tree all around. Yeah. And again, not just guava, but you did guava with uh, uh, black rock soil. Yeah. Because that is what it's supposed to be eaten if you're eating it raw, yeah. either with a salt or a black salt or a yeah. chili salt, um, which. Goes very well with the palate cleanser of a sorbet concept. Yeah. 
like a kala khatta yeah. something but you can get ideas from anywhere maybe this maybe the dhaba where the fulka guy yeah. is making fulkas or or a pan wala yeah. so these are the things which i incorporate in my food it's in his neighborhood basic food from a basic stand a spitting flame a hot tandoor are all fodder for the fine dining that will follow but more these also remain the places he shops at the places he eats at like this need a quick snack on the trot hot chips will have it for you just look at the range on offer there are banana chips green banana chips potato chips adrak potato chips chili potato chips outside the karela ones are getting the old slice and dice but inside there's clearly more than enough to make up for it these things can be used somewhere here and there as for the texture yeah. as a texture then i buy idli podi from here oh yeah yeah idli podi we use it with the soft shell crabs ha ah. so idli podi is gun powder gun powder it's gun powder and you can mix one of these things together yeah can be a wonderful soft idli spicy masala and crunchy these things can be a wonderful snack Speaking of puri or good old fashioned gunpowder, speaking of crisp deep fried goodness, those snacky greasy chatpata tastes that we all love, here they have been souped up. You can see it most vividly in his soft shell crab, also in his particularly pungent baby idlis. And while both are true to the South Indian spice they employ, they've also made sure their gunpowder came with a little extra kick. We make our own puri. Yeah. Because usually the market puri is very very spicy. Our puri has got a different recipe where we use lot of a uh, few things which are not traditionally used in puri masala. Okay. So we use that like we use some nut powder also. Uh huh. A little bit of flax seed, a yeah. little bit of uh, rice, uh, crushed oh. rice. So it gives a nice. Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable how good it is. And for the final touch, it's topped off with flame roasted coconut flakes and a tomato pickle based dipping sauce. So yes, while there is wit in the interpretation, it feels like there's warmth too. Back on the walk, Manish insists, and who can blame him that none would be complete without some chaat, or most specifically, aloo tikkis, hot, gleaming, sizzling in oil and fat. Like a chaat. Yeah. And 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 uh, if you see the real meaning of chaat is to lick. Ha. And why lick? It should be so delicious that yeah. you have to lick the yeah. lick your fingers or yeah. lick your platter or anything. So that is why it's chaat because it's really chaat is one of the most delicious things. And and it wasn't even chaat that inspired you much so much as a sear, right? In this case. Yes. Yeah. The, Tikki karari karna. So ha. that is why the idea of a potato spear chart. Yeah. Where the, we have made the entire tikki as a karara. So yeah. a lot of texture, a lot of texture. Yeah. And so when it came time to up the karari quotient, he found himself a secret weapon, a tea strainer. Yes, apparently a tea strainer is the powerful tool that allowed him to both maintain shape and keep the crunchiness going. Uh, tea strainer. Ha. It's really you can do something with this. Yeah. You can do something with this. Something like that. So okay, fill it with this, fill it with that, and fill it with potato shreds and all. Yeah. So is everything for you possible room for idea, inspiration, like anywhere, anywhere. So huh? Ideas can come from anywhere. And yes, proof lies in these. Add to that the chutney, curd, ragra, and you have one of the prettiest plates of chaat you're likely to see. One that might just be worth the premium. Think what you get it for twenty rupees on the street. Yes. Suddenly you're selling it for four hundred rupees in your yeah. restaurant. You have to put some kind of a value. Yeah. See, food cost-wise, this is nothing for you. Yeah. This is absolutely very yeah. low food cost. But the thing is, the amount of work. Yeah. The amount of labor which goes in making this dish, yeah. like these potato spears. Yeah. One guy he starts at four o'clock and four to seven he makes potato spears. He end up making only hardly thirty five. Yeah. Similar levels of playfulness extend to the pork ribs as well, laced with the sweet, sticky, smoky sense of meat achar. And so while many have. 
accurately hailed this for its ambition, for its inventiveness, even for its foresight. Perhaps its greatest strength lies in what they're looking to experiment with. The simple, occasionally even the mundane. Which is why when I found myself being led to a simple store that specialized in just naan, I wasn't surprised. You get amritsari naan in your own backyard. You get everything, the dosa wala, huh. the chaat wala and all these things. Yeah, everything is everywhere. That explains a lot and so we'll get to the accent they bring to it shortly. First up, just the simple satisfaction of a well-made flatbread. Yes, the Amritsari naan here is light, buttery and true to form with its assortment of chanas, potato and chutney. As Moorish a plate as you can hope to have. Hottest and the <laughs> It doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter where, any time is a good time for this. Like the naan, the paratha, like all our flatbreads. That actually, you know, we usually do them in conventional ways, but they're also amazing vehicles, no? For carry, yeah. 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 To carry anything. That this is potato. Yeah. We do it with bacon, we do it with duck, yeah. with, with rye mushroom, pumpkin carrot. Yeah. So different different they can if it can be stuffed with potato, it can be stuffed with anything. And when it comes to anything, then the imagination goes and there you can yeah. play the wildest of the things. By the way, you'll notice it's not like he plays for technique. The point of a winning formula is that you don't. Tandoor is an art and um, I would say you need everyday practice and all this. So he can do thousand times better than what I can do in the Tandoor. So idea is mine but execution is this. If this was an effort to showcase the versatility of Indian bread, you'd be hard-pressed to find one more effective. Turns out the kulcha works with all manner of things and in unprecedented permutations, like pumpkin and cheddar, truffle and mushroom, even duck with chili and hoisin. The thing is the name is perfect, Indian accent. It's just like these little clever touches. It's desi, bone deep they see like old fashioned, old world, that inspiration comes from, you know, pockets that most of us have forgotten. Like he thinks of pulkas, he thinks of phantom cigarettes, he thinks of khandvi, all the basic stuff. And takes that and then gives you something like this. One other type of flatbread they use is worth mentioning. And yes, if this looks like a setup for Peking duck with pancakes, you're not wrong. That was the inspiration, except here Manish has brought the same treatment to his key roast boti kebabs. The pancake is a moist rumali roti, the hoisin is replaced with a trio of chutneys and it's brilliant. It may look Chinese, the taste is desi all the way, making it that rare riff that works at every level. Who on earth looks at a kati roll and thinks of peking duck? then manages to pull it off and make it as if not more delicious than both inspirations in the first place. And on that note, it's time for a break. Do join us back in just a bit. Manish is putting the magic into Mithai.